Hello friends and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, here in front of me you can see a very interesting rail line that I've set up here. Now, what would you say if I told you I'm going to get a train to go through these loops? Now, what would you say if I told you I'm going to get a train to go through these loops without using any mods? And now, what would you say if I told you I'm going to get a train to go through these loops and then through this loop without any mods. Interested? So there I was the other day playing with micromanage a little bit, actually recording my previous design video uh, showing off some mods. And I noticed something interesting. Let's see if you all notice it as well. If I take this pole and I move it. See anything interesting? Those sparks, right? And those sparks mean that the power pole is reconnecting. So Micromanage is now actually smart enough to know when you're moving things around, it should keep the nodes connected between the different elements. So these power poles are staying connected even when I'm moving this one around. That's fascinating, right? So I thought to myself, I wonder if this works on other things. So first I tried it with belts and the belt stayed connected when I moved machines around. And then I thought, well, what if I use it on train lines? Maybe I can do something interesting with train lines and they'll stay connected. And as it turns out, when you move train lines around, they also stay connected. These individual pieces of track have a series of connected nodes. And from satisfactory standpoint, as you move them around and rotate them and twist them, they're still connected. So that means you can actually do interesting things where Satisfactory doesn't necessarily realize that it shouldn't be able to, say, climb a particular incline or do something that it's uh, not allowed to do. It can break the rules of some of the physics of the game in very interesting ways. So first I set up one loop and that worked pretty well. I can get a train to go through it. Now there's one major caveat that I'm going to tell you all right now. Spoiler, here you go the trains can't actually go upside down. Unfortunately, uh, due to some coding in the physics engine, when the train starts to think that it's inverted, it wants to flip back horizontal up and down the normal way. I'm not sure why it's coded that way, but for whatever reason, trains can't actually be rotated upside down. I tried this a variety of different ways. Over here, I tried rotating it in a corkscrew fashion. This, this didn't work at all. The train just goes, normal, flat, straight, all the way down this corkscrew with absolutely nothing happening. It just stays flat all the way through. So that was a failed experiment. But loops, I can actually get about halfway up before it starts to think that it's inverted and therefore flips itself back around. But it still tries to go through the loops. Now, the other issue is that to go through more than one of these, you do have to get enough velocity to get to the top before it starts going back around. And by the time it gets to the second one, it's lost most of its velocity. So getting through three of them, much less three and a massive one, you need a lot of extra velocity. To get that velocity, I went vertical. Now, for those of you who saw Kibitz's video about two years ago, where he makes these really intense train tracks that go all the way up to space and come back down. I'm using a similar idea here with a very large tower, but I built this rail all the way up vertical coming down from it. So you get maximum velocity going straight down. I think we get up to about 250 kilometers per hour before it launches into these series of loops. So that works pretty well to get us up to the velocity that we need to make it all the way through all three of the loops. So I also discovered another interesting property. If I use Micromanage to take some of these pieces of train track and move them apart from each other, the nodes stay connected. Those are still technically connected pieces, even though visibly they are not. So what I thought this would give me was a way to make ludicrous jumps over large gaps and see the train flying through the air. Unfortunately, that also doesn't work. What happens instead, because they're in the coding somewhere, discrete nodes, the train actually just teleports from one point to the other. So it'll leap from here to here with no visible distance in between because mathematically there's no actual distance between those two points. It just jumps from here to here with no gain or loss of momentum. 
So that's a little bit of a disappointment. However, it does allow us to do one interesting thing, and that is make the trip up to the top of this very, very rapid. So this node here is actually connected to a node all the way at the top here, right here on this auxiliary train track. So it'll automatically teleport from the bottom to this point. And again, this works completely well in vanilla. So that node connects all the way up to this node automatically and the train will teleport. It'll just hop from there to here instantaneously and then go on its way all the way down that massive vertical track to gain all the momentum we need to get into those loops and go all the way down the rest of the track. Of course, you can't actually build loops like this unless you're using Micromanage or another mod, but once they're made, you can use them in vanilla. Okay, no further ado, let's see this thing in action. So we hop in, open the train menu, and we're going to turn on self-driving. Now the train should slowly crawl its way up here and take us on our little ride. Oh, I'm so excited. Here we go. Two hundred and fifty kilometers per hour. Oh, zip! And now through the loops, and you can see right there it's flipping. So it always looks like it's flat, but it's going all the way through them. The third loop, and see it goes on the outside of the track for some reason, and now into the massive final loop. Here we go. You can do it. You can do it. Keep pushing. Almost made it to the top and there we go back around and out of the loop there you have it goes all the way around those all of those loops all four loops pretty amazing right so it's a little underwhelming of course because it doesn't flip all the way back around the way that we'd want upside down on those but I still think it's a pretty cool thing. So let's look at this from a third person view. And even on its own, it's still got enough momentum. It can just barely make it up into the last huge, huge loop. And there you go. You can do it, you can do it. I think I can, I think I can. And it comes out the other end. Perfect. And I think this is a really interesting technique if we can find more ways to use this and use how Micromanage keeps nodes connected even as you move things around. This could make for some really interesting factory patterns. This could make for some really great hyper-efficient train lines to get trains to just teleport from one side of the map to the other. So if you have Micromanage, go ahead and try it out with some of these things, moving nodes around and see what sort of results you can get out of it. I'd be really curious about what people can do with this technique, particularly being able to teleport things around the map. I assume you can do it with resources as well as trains to get them to automatically appear in other places as you move bits of belts apart, having trains that can teleport from one end of the map to the other instantaneously. I think there's a lot of potential uses for this if people want to start playing with it and break the game in interesting ways. So let me know what you all come up with with this. I'm also going to provide the download to this file so that you all can play this in vanilla. You can try these loops out for yourself and the teleporting, all of these sorts of things. I tried it with all of my mods disabled and it still worked for me. So I'd be curious to see if it also works for other people. So go ahead and download the file. It's a super small download. It's half a megabyte and see if it works for you as well. And that's it. I know this is a super short video this week, but wanted to show off this new discovery that I'd found to you all as soon as I could. So check it out. Let me know what you come up with and we'll see you back here next time. Bye friends.